What's up guys? Welcome back to Motion Design. Uh that sounds wrong. What's up guys? My name is Luke. Welcome back to Motion and Design. There we go, that sounds better. Cool, so this is gonna be the second video in this particle advection tutorial series. I mean it's two videos, I don't know if that counts as a series. But yeah, we're gonna be just kind of building on what we did in the last tutorial. Kind of using the power advection, but just using it a bit differently. I mean it's pretty much the same, it's just more changing up the pyro and just adding like a few other like tips and tricks in there so yeah again it's not gonna be anything too complicated but it's gonna be a different result as it's gonna look way cooler in my opinion i really like the results of this one this was just like a bunch of like messing around and seeing what looked good but i liked what it looked like so yeah again the project finals will be up on patreon but if not you know like and subscribe goes a long way but yeah let's get into it cool so let's start over here with a plane Let's set this to about 200 by 200. Let's add a pyro emitter. And now we'll get a bunch of smoke, which is cool. But I want to set thickness over here to 2. And I want to change the density to 5. And I want to bring down our temperature. So if you press play now, nothing's going to happen. The reason for that is that our thickness is quite low. So if we go into our pyro over here and decrease the voxel size, now we'll get some cool results. So let's also turn off the gravity because I want to control the gravity. And now when you press play, it works perfectly. We're also going to just go into our pyro over here and turn off the dissipation. Um, the reason for that, according to like I was saying in the last video, is just so that the particles have data the entire time, velocity data the entire time. Because if there is dissipation, it kind of just goes flying off. So yeah, that's why we're turning that off. And again, if we turn it on now, now we'll get like a bunch of smoke. I also want to go to frame 30 over here and then just keyframe the smoke to turn off just so that it stops at a certain point. Cool. Now let's go to our simulations and let's add gravity. So I'm going to set this to negative 300. And now the smoke will fall downwards. But I want to have a little bit more randomness in this. So I want to add a shader field, set this to noise and set this to about 500 over here. Let's also clamp these values a little bit. And now when you press play, now we have just a little bit more randomness of where these things fall down and where they don't. I mean, it's not that important, but I just wanted some like randomness in the way that they fell, fell downwards. Cool. Uh, I think the other thing I want to do is just, let me just add a spherical field over here. And that is that for now. I also want the smoke to kind of like rotate around. So let's go forces and let's add a rotator. The way that the rotator works is that it always rotates around the Z axis over here. So we just need to rotate this upwards 90 degrees. <laughs> now when you press play, it all rotates. Awesome. But we don't want it to kind of like rotate so far out like this. So all we need to do is just add a spherical field and it fits perfectly in our square over here. And now it will just be the center that rotates. It's rotating a little bit fast for what I want. So I'm just going to reduce this to 10. And now press play again. And look, we have a cool simulation, which is just what I wanted. Cool. Let's go and set up our particles. So let's go simulators, simulation, emitters, basic emitter. Let's set it to box again. Let's set it to 200 by 200 with 5 in the Y. We're going to set this to shot again. Let's increase this a bunch. Um, almost here. Just for the fun of it, you know. And turn the speed off. Cool. So now if we press play, you'll notice that our particles are being affected by these two uh, forces over here. So... The only way that I could find to fix this is to just go simulations, groups, add another particle group, and then put these into the particle group. And now our particles do not get affected by these because they're not in this emitter's particle group. Cool. So now let's go simulate modifiers and pyro advict, and then let's put that in our particle group. And now they should be advected. Awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. Cool. Now we can start making this look. Let's go over here and set this to 90. 
set this to negative 19, set the 0, 0. And let's just change our framing to make this a square. Let's zoom in a bit. And let's also make our focal length like 50. We obviously don't need to, but I like the like 50 and 80 focal lengths to be honest. And let's see what this is looking like. Ooh, we can also hide our plane over here. And now look, we have a bunch of particles and it looks really cool. So let's just go and add a dome light over here. Set this to zero just so that it's dark. And let's add an area light. Let's bring this off to the side over here. I just want to N A to do that. Bring this down, kind of like angle it. Angle it a little bit up. Something like that. Um, let's also just add another one of those, what are they called? Color mappers into our group over here. I'm going to do it again by velocity and maybe this time set it to Y. And I'm going to drop this quite low. Let's see what this looks like. Um, yeah, things cool. If even lower. I don't know, maybe, maybe X. Ten. Fifteen. So, uh, the yeah. inner. That was cool. Uh, 10, 15. Yeah, I think some iPad looks cool. Obviously, you guys can mess around with it until it's something that you like. Although, we are getting this kind of. Ah, I can see what it looks like later. Cool. Let's go and create a texture over here. Put it on our particle group. Add in our optimized spears just so we can control the radius. And let's go search color user, color user daughter, and let's plug this into the transmission because this is going to be perfectly see through. So if I uh, undo this, we have a bunch of our steers. And now we're going to add this to a color. Let's add a ramp over here. And I'm just going to clamp this value down quite a bit. And then let's go and increase our roughness by a bit and let's reduce our IOR. I think that's where the magic of this comes in is that IOR. I also want to just make this blue. Uh, um, is it because? Yeah, so I mean, actually, you can see if this was over here with 1.5, that doesn't look too cool. But then bringing down the IOR, we're getting something pretty cool over here. I think it's just because of the color mapper over here. I'm going to change this back to Y. Can uh, yeah, we can just keep it like that for now. I'll leave those type of tweaks up to you guys to find the right look that you're going for. But for now, I'm going to do this. Uh, why are we not seeing much? Maybe I should inverse these around. It's almost as if this isn't affecting it at all. That's because <laughs> I forgot to select over here the particle color. That makes sense now because it was literally just a black value. Okay. Can't please a little bit more. I think something like this it looks pretty cool. Now you can see that we have this kind of like weird liquidy effect going on. Uh, so I'm going to keep the light. I'm going to bring down the light just a bit. And actually I'm going to let a little bit more light. No, 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 no. Something like that I think should be fine. So I'm going to add motion blur onto this and with the motion blur, I think the lens stays open or the frame stays open for a while. So then more light is left in. So usually you want to reduce the light over there. 
Uh, I Go By Zach has a really cool tutorial on motion blur. Uh, I think it's on Vincent Smith's Patreon. And I watched it a while back. But yeah, he has like a full in-depth look at how motion blur works. So yeah, if you want a proper in-depth, go check him out. Because I haven't used a camera in a long time. Or at least in like a professional way. But let's go set, turn on our motion blur. Let's just bring this down a bit. Let me set this to like 2. And let's see what this looks like. I actually think this is still going to be too bright. Maybe like that. And let's render out a frame. Did I accidentally make it like progressive rendering? Mm, let's hit bucket. Ah, oh, oh, that's why. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Let's let's stop this. I'm gonna set threshold to one. Change this to brute force, seeing that we're not doing outside lighting, and then also want to just make the bucket size a lot bigger. Um, if your GPU is not very strong, don't set your, set your bucket size too high, or else your PC, uh, PC might crash. So, yeah. Let's see if it works better this time around. Come on, buddy. Ah, I mean, you can literally already see over here how much brighter it is. So yeah, I think this needs to be turned down quite a bit. But you can see now that we're getting this really cool effect over here. It kind of looks like this weird mix between like water or something abstract. I don't know, I just really like the abstractness of it. Um, and yeah, the main color that's coming through is through the light. Just by, you know, making this temperature like really blue. You can obviously get different results by, you know, putting different colored lights over here. You could put them on different size to get like different uh, hues and stuff. But for my tutorial, I'm going to leave it at just blue. Also because my render was just blue. But yeah, I think this looks pretty cool. I'm going to just bump up this contrast and also just bring down this darks a little bit. Uh, I don't like that look. That is not what I'm going for. But it's fine. I, I think the main thing to solve that would just be to bring down our light over here. But hey, you can see the results and you can pretty much see it's almost exactly the same as the one in the beginning of my video. I think the only difference is that I just spent a little bit more time on this color mapper over here just to get these contrasting between the whites and blacks over here to be a little bit more. But yeah, you guys can do that on your side or you can just, you know, download the project file. But we can also do something else over here. We can just add another camera and we can flip this around. And now we got a whole other look on this side. But now let's, uh, let's find like a cool frame over here. And look at that. It looks like a bunch of like bowls rising. And I think the same thing. I think the bright the light might be a little bit too bright uh, actually let me stop that but yeah i mean with this we can just add some hey stop rendering it's a pick point over here let's add some depth of field it's like two and then yeah look at that we have a pretty cool render over here i think i'll adjust the colors a little bit more make it a little bit less blue or add different colors to make it also this bright. But yeah, I mean, look at that. We have a really cool result of it there. And just from this, we have two really cool scenes now. And you can get a bunch of different looks just by adjusting the this clamping value over here and also adjusting the color mapper. But yeah, mess around with it, see what you can create. But this is pretty much how I got the results that I showed you guys in the beginning. I think it looks pretty cool. And yeah, hope you guys do too. Yeah, the project files will be up on Patreon um, if you guys are interested in that. But if not, a like and a subscribe does go a long way. But yeah, until next time. Peace.